Okay, so this is my second part of this video. Now, when I say second part is I accidentally, accidentally press stop on my camera. That's why there's two parts to this. And I think that that's probably a good idea. I mean, it, my, that last video was uh, over an hour long. And to tell you the truth, I'm not even halfway through. So anyways, this is the second part regarding these two machines right here that like this is the Sanyo V-Core 2 format and this is the Quasar VX format. So in my last video, I was talking about the tuners. Now I actually don't use these tuners on these machines. Now, if you do tune into the channel seven, you will be able to record the FM radio, which is very interesting. Believe it or not, the FM radio does cross over into the VHF over the air signal. Now this machine, the Quasar machine, also has a built-in tuner. Let me go ahead and show you the Yasha buttons. Let's see, they're removed right now because I actually opened up this machine. I really want to show how this machine works. I want to show the insides. I want to show how to maintain this machine. And I also want to show how I was able to repair this machine. Okay. So these are the actual buttons for the tuners on this machine, like so, they go like that. You actually have to screw that back on, that's why it's kind of loose right there. And this is a VHF button right here that goes like so. So those are the VHF on top, and this is that UHF on the bottom. Let me go ahead and let you listen to this. Now that's a very different sound compared to this other machine, the Sanyo v 2 tuner right here. This is a lot louder right here than this right here. Oh my, it's very wonderful to be able to hear these things. So less noise on the tuner, more noise on the tuner. So that would be some another thing to consider when you were Considering buying these machines back in 1977, louder tuner dials, quieter tuner dials right here. Okay, so let me go ahead and demonstrate on this machine. You know what, let me go ahead and place this, uh, this V-Core 2 machine aside. I, I don't think there's a lot more to say about this V-Core 2 machine. I really want to focus on this machine now, especially since I am going to be opening up this machine right now. I'm going to be flipping the, flipping it over and showing you the bottom boards. I mean, this is going to be a very detailed video. Okay, so I'm going to put this uh, Sanyo VTC 8200 machine aside. All right. Let me kind of show you what's going on in here. Now this top board right here, I did remove the, the con conductive hot glue. You want to do that on these machines because that will create semi-conductive shorts. If you're having a problem with these machines, I recommend you remove all of it. I mean, I, that's what I did. I removed all of the ho conductive hot glue on this machine, including this board. I There was... Con semi, it's semi-conductive, it's not 100% conductive, but that would create problems. So let me just open this up right here, and right away you can see this actuator here. This actuator is in charge of this rubber roller. What this actuator does, it moves this roller like so, towards the capstan. The capstan is located about right here. And uh, regarding this roller, when I first purchased this machine, this roller right here, well, first of all, I was very happy that it was in good shape. It was not dried up, it was not cracked, and it was not missing. I mean, it would have been very difficult to be able to find such a roller if in case this roller was missing. But in fact, it was here. Now, it was very dirty. So I before I placed the tape in here, I went ahead and I cleaned that roller. Now, do correct me if I'm wrong. I went ahead and I cl cleaned this roller with 50% isopropyl alcohol. 
that's this right here 50 percent now i don't recommend you use anything stronger than 50 percent on the rollers not on not only on this machine on any machine because that would be too strong there is a chance that it might damage now the reason i did use alcohol is because this roller right here was incredibly dirty I mean, it was. Inc I don't think this machine had ever been maintained, which might be one of the reasons why whoever originally owned this machine, they they decided that it was no longer operational. But I can tell you, this machine is in fact operational. I do plan on show you the video output on this machine. It looks very nice, very crisp picture, which I'm very happy to show you. I don't think I've ever seen a YouTube video showing the actual video output of this machine. I mean, at least having a good picture. I've seen many videos where the video output on this machine looks very bad. Okay, so let me go ahead and do it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn on this machine because I really want to show you how this machine works. That's the beauty of YouTube. So let me go ahead and press play and you'll be able to see how this actuator I've used this on micro cassette machines as well. I've used this on many machines and it works great. It's not too expensive and it is in fact synthetic. It is 100% synthetic, as it says right here, 100% synthetic oil. So what I did is I placed, I don't know, about three drops in here. I placed one drop, I played the machine, I let it spin. And I place another drop, played it again, let it spin. And then I place a third drop. After that third drop was in there, I decided, I mean, I might be wrong. Like I said, I'm not an expert. I decided that this bearing right here was nice and lubricated. So I recommend you lubricate this roller right here, as well as clean it. Now this roller right here, it has quite a few jobs. Not only does it pinch the tape and guide the tape, it actually cleans the tape, believe it or not. Now this roller right here is in fact made out of rubber. And rubber parts, they do in fact pick up loose contaminants on the tape. That would be like dirt, dust, even um, loose particles. Now regarding these tapes themselves, they are very prone to loose particles be because of the fact that they, they do not have vinyl backing the the actual ribbon magnetic ribbon that's in here it does not have vinyl backing that means that there is a lot of wear and tear on this machine on this format and listen i i, I consider it another reason why it failed the formulation used on these tapes is, was not very good and it required you to clean and maintain the heads and the rollers on this machine very often more often than normal so if you have a machine like this i really recommend you oil this bearing right here this roller bearing and you also clean this now i went ahead and clean, cleaned it with 50 percent alcohol i only did that once like i told you do not expect these machines to be maintained properly when you when you buy these i went ahead and used 50 percent isopropyl alcohol I only did one pass now it's up to you you can go ahead and use simple water but it would take it's gonna take a lot of passes you're gonna have to do I don't know maybe 50 passes I mean if you have the time to do such a thing go ahead uh, go ahead and do 50 passes on this roller but uh, that's very time-consuming so I, what I did was I did one pass with 50% and I do not recommend you use anything stronger than that. For example, you will be able to find things like 70%. Uh, but do, do not use something like this. It's too, too concentrated. Do not use that on the roller right there. And definitely do not use anything stronger than that on the roller like this right here. Now I love using this product right here. Is from the MG Chemicals brand, which my father used to use. And this is in fact 
0.9% pure. So definitely do not use this on the rollers. It will damage them. It's, it is too concentrated. All right. So that's what I recommend regarding these rollers. All right, let me go ahead and uh, eject this tape once again. Now this is gonna be a very detailed video. Let me go ahead and eject this tape right here, like so. And I'm gonna go ahead, uh, by the way, that's, that's my fridge. I'm actually in my kitchen right now. Like I said, I'm not an expert. I don't do this for a living. This is actually my, my favorite place in my home, my kitchen. It is actually my office. It's my workshop. My kitchen is my workshop. I do this as a hobby. I do this after I get out of work. It's very it's a very relaxing hobby. I mean, at least to me. I work in the electrical field. I work with uh, a lot of blueprints, a lot of numbers. And after I get home, I love working on these old machines. Especially since my father taught me how to fix videotape machines back in the late 80s and early 90s. He passed away when I was 15. But I love continuing his legacy. Now, these are the video heads. Now, actually, video head. This is a single head system. And believe it or not, it is very easy to remove this head. And it helps a lot. I'm pretty sure the companies that release this format, they knew that you had to maintain this drum very often so they come they came out with a system where you do not need any tools at all to remove this drum right here let me go ahead and do it it's very easy all right let me go ahead and place this here like so okay so what you do is you kind of hold the heads in place and you turn this okay so these are the the video drum for this machine uh, like I told you before this is in fact a non channeled video head which means that there is no flooded fluted channels on the actual drum which was an innovation that was released after 1977 you will find that on beta machines and vhs machines as well and let me kind of show you the actual head right here see this right here is the actual head and right away you can tell you're probably thinking hey isn't that a two head system isn't this one of the heads and this is the other head well no you only have one head right there. The, the reason that this is here is to act kind of like a counterbalance. If you do not have this part right here, this would kind of wobble and create vibrations. So they actually place this placeholder here just to, just as a placeholder to create that balance right there. Now, you will have to clean this part right here quite often. I recommend you clean this part every two hours, which is crazy. I know that, but that that's one of the things of owning such an old machine. And you know what? On later machines, it was enough just to place this cleaning tip right here. You would have to wet that. This is used. I know that. Uh, I just kind of letting you know on other machines it was enough just to kind of rub this gently like so but regarding this this actual drum right here you have to get really you have to get in there you have to get really involved when you're cleaning this machine you have to get in there in the actual head because if you don't do that there will be residue tape residue stuck in there and that will give you a bad picture. Now, I've seen that on other videos regarding this format. And I got to let you know, you have to really get in there, really clean it very well in order to get a good picture. 
Now, I don't want to place this back in there because I got to let you know something very important because it was one of the things that I had to do in order to get this machine up and running properly. Now, I did use this product, like I said, on this machine, on all the bearings. I dedicated my time to place this product on all the bearings, but I noticed something. There are, in fact, two bearings on this machine that you have to really lubricate very well, because if you do not lubricate those two parts very well, you will not get proper tape speed. When you do not, have, I mean, at least on this machine, if you do not have proper tape speed, you will get white noise. What white noise is, is that white colored um, lines, like um, artifacts horizontally, and they will be moving. They, they actually move very strangely on this machine. Those are uh, that white noise. It will it will be moving like so from the center outward like that if you, for example if you have a machine like this and you have decided that you, you can't fix it you can't figure it out i gotta let you know if for any reason you have a machine like this and you have that there there are these uh artifacts white colored artifacts and they move from the center of the screen outward like so and they keep doing that same thing over and over again it's repetitive it's continuous go ahead and focus on lubricating specifically this part in here now this part in here that is a sleeve bearing and that sleeve bearing is what actually drives the video drum this right here actually spins let me kind of do it right here this is the what this is one of the two motors on this machine which is very strange you would think this machine would have a lot more motors it only has two now regarding this huge motor right here it, it's pretty much big enough to power a small blender when this motor spins as you can tell right there it is actually moving the actual part that spins the video drum now, like I told you, I dedicated my time, what I did, I lubricated one bearing at a time. Now, when I got up to this part right here, it fixed that problem. It fixed the white noise. And I had to use a lot of oil. And by a lot, I mean, it was not enough to just place one or two or three drops in here. I had to place about seven drops of this before I got a good picture. That means that when I received this machine, this sleeve bearing in here was very dry, which is very bad. You would have a lot of friction in there. So I recommend if you're getting that white noise that I just explained, I would recommend you lubricate this inside sleeve bearing with at least seven drops of oil. Like I said, I might be wrong. You might be an expert on this format. And please do correct.